many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our live, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey. Hey everyone, welcome to Power Hour Live, February 15th. Wouldn't you know it, SPX is up and moving higher. Not quite back to all-time highs, which was 5048, but we are at 5031. S&P up 26, NASDAQ up 38, Russell up 50, Dow up 325. Gold and silver, both green. Notes and bonds, slightly green. Ten-year yield, a little bit down. Oil up almost 2%. Natty gas down 1%. Grains are red. Euro and the pound, green. Bitcoin, slightly green. VIX is up about a half percent, 14.46. Even the VIX is tired of the market going up. It's like, I'm not going down anymore. I'm just not. Okay. You can go up. I'm not going down. Um, all right. So what did I do today? I am in a my morning two to one iron condor still. I was, I think it was at like 40, I saw it like 46, 47, 48%. I was trying to get 50 and then it ran away from me. So I'm going to need it to come back down to about 25 for that to hit. I've also got a couple of re-entries on. One's a two, three, one's a one to one. The, these, are, This is the combined position. They're sharing a strike. So those are up about 50 and 55% respectively. <clears throat> Had a couple other re-entries that I got the stop lowered and then got stopped out for a profit. And then I've got these, these two. I uh, did get in some JSPs, just a few contracts. Uh, so I booked like 1400 on those. I've got a 1DTE iron condor on that's in the red. Not a lot of decay in the 1DTE today. I assume because of PPI tomorrow. So it's appearing like CPI, PPI, FOMC, any of those highly regarded economic news events, it's probably best to pass on the 1DTE. I've got my yeah, NDX did take trade that S &S I opened. Got my NDX trade that I opened, and it's pretty centered. Sorry, Chad, go ahead. I was going to say, it didn't take S&P to very long to get back up there. What I've got today is I did an AM number one, booked 45 bucks, scratch trade, uh, hit 20%, and then got stopped. Lunchtime number one, then hit 20, 40, 60, and out. And I've got my power hour in right now. And that's my it. power hour tranche one just entered uh, with an up day, 50, 30 straddle, filled at 11 bucks even. Fifty thirty straddle for tranche one. I'm on the so you're on the nine ten. Okay, and I'm on the nine twenties. 
you're on the 690s and I'm on the 740s. SPX still pushing highs of day. That is a real bummer if my uh, morning trade doesn't come back. When you get within a few pennies and then it runs away, that's not, not any fun. How are you doing overall today, Chadwick? So I had a that forty five dollars scratch. My lunchtime number one was thirteen plus thirteen sixty. So and then I'm in a power hour, but if it keeps going up, the power hour want to get stopped. You say no, no morning trade for you? Yeah, I had I had an AM number one that was a forty five dollar winner. Oh, it was basically a scratch trade. Booked twenty percent and then got stopped. And I need it to stop pushing. I mean, it's way above the expected move for the day. Yep. I've got expected move at about 50.24. Up to fifty thirty two. I'm looking at iron uh, power hour number two, fifty thirty five, fifty thirty. Thirty points wide on wings. No, Rick, today, volatility did not contract at the open. Did a tiny bit. Let's see that. Yeah, it's not, it didn't contract more than a quarter percent. It looks like it, yeah, the gap down was 0.14%, so it did not qualify for me. Uh, Jake, no, I've never had any luck in real life or testing with overnight ricks by the way tomorrow's not cpi ppi i think that maybe that's what you meant but um yeah cpi was the one earlier this week but the reason it typically doesn't work is because those options are a little bit juiced so for example you can see the one day options implied volatility is at 15.39 versus Monday's 10%. You know, so so they they pump that in and, and as soon as that number comes out, volatility is going to contract. So that works against your rick. So of course if of course if it makes a massive move, like if there's a surprise and it makes a massive move, you can make money, but overall, typically not a profitable strategy. Um, yeah, it, it, it was for a while, you know, CPI there for a while was, had a little bit more impact and then kind of shifted more to PPI. And so, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess it depends on the number, whether it'll be more important or not, but I'm not sure what, I mean, the market certainly put, had more juice pumped into the CPI date at the beginning of the week than it did PPI. So I would say that CPI is a little bit more, a little bit more impactful as far as the market's concerned.
We need to get down to about 50, 50, I'm going to have a chance at hitting my profit target on my morning iron condor. So those who are kind of under, trying to understand what it is, and I, I was trying to refresh myself. So core PPI is the change in the price of finished goods and services sold by producers, excluding food and energy. <clears throat> Where is let's CPI? Let's just have a calm final hour. CPI is the change in the price of goods and services purchased by consumers, excluding food and energy. So we get the change in price of goods purchased by consumers versus the change in price of finished goods and services sold by producers. Yeah, that's how I've always thought about it, Uga. SPX currently up <clears throat> just over half percent from the open. I'm going to try to ride my re-entries into the close. <clears throat> We're currently at 56% and 60%. About 15 cents from getting filled on power hour number one, 20%. 15, 20 cents. Rut up over 2% again today. That rut likes to move both directions. Yeah, I was in beast mode earlier. Got XLK, the tech sector slightly red, everything else green. XOP green, regional banks 3.5% higher, energy, gold, real estate, biotech, <clears throat> financials, retail, all up. Willio down 15% after earnings. Riot's been rocking. It's down six, almost 7% today. John Deere down 5.5% after earnings. Jumia, the Amazon of Africa, up 39%. Wow. All the way up to four and a half bucks.
Lyft up 15% even after the, did you guys hear about what happened with Lyft's earnings? The CFO, complete typo in the earnings report, the tune of about $3 billion or something like that. It was like he, he put, I can't remember what it had to do with, but something to do with the, um, the revenue or something he put. 500 basis points and it was supposed to be 50 basis points. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, on the EBITDA. Yeah. And so <laughs> the stock That's shot funny. up, then it came back down, but now it's right on back up, up to 19. Yeah, Wuga. So um, here's my, here's my thought around the, just entering the five wide in SPX, or in the case, what I've been doing is just NDX 10 wide just to free up some room in um, SPX. So for example, here's my, here's my NDX trade today. So the width of the spread, and I'm entering right around 25 Delta, the width of the spread is going to almost typically almost cover the expected move for the day. So to start the day, the NDX expected move is 108. So, you know, it's covering about 100 points down and 100 points up from center. So the way that I, the way that I'm thinking about it is, okay, if price stays within the expected move, that's one standard deviation. If it stays within the expected move 68% of the time, Reality selling premium, you're you're getting a little extra typically over time. So, you know, call it 70% of the time, it's going to stay in your range. And so the way that I the way that I'm thinking about that is okay, so uh my max profit on this trade is 830. If I take a full loss, it's minus eleven seventy. And that that's pretty normal. It's about three to two-ish, kind of on the risk to reward. So if I, let's just use a sample of like a hundred trades. So hundred trades, let's say 70 of them hit 830. So 830 times 70 is, let me write this down, 58,100. And 30 of those hundred trades hit max loss, which is 1170 times 30 equals, so that'd be minus 35,100. So, so that, you know, just from a positive expectancy standpoint, that's, that's the way I'm kind of looking at it is that, you know, if price can stay in the, inside the expected move about 70% of the time, based on your risk and reward of doing, you know, that, that width, you're, you're typically going to come out ahead over time. Um, now I did a lot of back testing and I couldn't get anything to, to test decent, but I don't know. So, but I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm doing it super small and, you know, so far it's, it's been really good. Of course I don't, you know, it, it's, it's a probability based trade. So it's going to be based on a large number of occurrences, but I don't, I just, it, it seems like it should work. Yeah, not yeah. I couldn't get the back testing to show me any value. You know, and then the other thing I I started to do at the beginning was, you know, if it started to go down and kind of getting towards the downside break even, I would set up a new centered iron condor, and then I'd let them both ride. But then, then you're really like, okay, then you got to really hit it in a little tiny spot to really make any money. Otherwise, you're because of the combination of the two, you're you have a pretty narrow range. So, you know, I've seen many times where it kind of goes outside the expected move and then it comes back in. And so really what I'm doing is I'm just putting it on in the morning and letting it ride win or lose. Need a little bit of bounce here. Well, that's, I mean, that's the way the options are priced. So, I mean, I've seen it with a bunch of different strategies over and over and over again. When you look at, um, you know, a large number of occurrences, the 
probabilities. They just, they play out. Yeah, and you're certainly going to see periods where you, you know, you hit inside this inside the expected move a lot more than 70%. You're going to have periods where you're you know, you're when the market's really volatile and it's moving into a higher volatility kind of situation and you're you know, you have, you know, a couple of weeks where you're blowing out of the expected move, you know, half the time. So, but over time, I think those those uh those probabilities should play out. At least they have from what I've seen. Tranche two coming in. Oh, never mind. Oh, sorry. False alarm. I saw something flash that trade steward was just adjusting my. It's not quite time for tranche two yet. By the way, if my bot doesn't fire for tranche tranche two because we're real close to the edge, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and manually fire it. Well, my morning iron condor was starting to get close again on that little down move and then it bounced. I want to just close my AM trade here. I'm just going to close my AM trade. I'd rather have a little bit more bullish bias. Tranche two is getting ready to fire. Tranche two fired. Came in on the 30 straddle again. Filled it at 1050. So in the morning, I was just I just needed to reduce a little bit. I've got two re-entries that are fairly well centered. I'd rather have my tranche two update come in than hold that morning one that was on the edge. Yeah, discount. So I'm I'm just going to about the 25 <clears throat> delta. 25 delta 10, 10 wide wings. And the NASDAQ was red earlier. It's actually just barely green. <clears throat> So it's right back to center, <clears throat> whereas SPX is out of its expected move. Right now, I'm just rolling with the two power hours I have on, I'm not looking to enter a third right now.
So I'm on the 30 straddle for both, one and two. I'm not really looking for a minimum credit discount. Well, for one, I've, I've got the bot get doing it and I don't have any filters like that, but um, it's more of just, I want to, you know, I don't, I don't want like a two times the risk, you know, like today was a pretty typical day where you're, you know, 830 is my max profit versus 1170. It's my max risk. So whatever that is. Uh, it's definitely not near as liquid, but, um, you know, the bot is using limit orders and it's just canceling and replacing, adjusting a little bit to get filled. So, uh, when I was, when I was trading it without the bot, yeah, I mean, you definitely got to work the order more. And then the other thing I've noticed is I've tried to get out for like 20 cents at the end of the day. And it wouldn't even fill. It expired within the range, but didn't even fill. It just expired. Yeah, I mentioned I mentioned in the PM session, Dark Avenger. I what I'm I'm trying to hold out for at least eight hundred, closer to a thousand bucks on that one. No, and that's why I like, I, I didn't mind doing NDX for this one because I'm just entering and then I don't have a stop and I'm just letting it expire. So NDX is a little better for that kind of scenario than having stops and all that stuff. VXX verticals up tiny bit Sold some premium and natty gas today. The IV, natural gas has just been plummeting. The IV, if you look at UNG, the ETF, IV is getting a little frothy. Percentiles at the 74 in the annual IV. Set to 81, 85, IV rank of 85 in the monthly. My one DTE, a little bit red. Just not a very good decay in the one DTE today. Does UNG have uh, have the Contango futures roll issue? Let's see. I don't remember. Yeah, so you don't you don't want to hold it long term then. Yeah.
Got a profit target of 90% on my pre-entries here. I'm sitting at about 72 and 74%. Rut, looks like I can, I'm going to take my rut duck off for beak profit. It's a pretty low chance of getting back down there. See if I can get filled around five bucks. Need a bounce. Need a bounce. Build less than five bucks on my rut duck. My time fly down a few hundred. Yep. Don't don't be taking profits now, Mr. SPX. Get 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 back up to fifty thirty. That's where I would take it. Trunch three. Coming in here shortly. Well, I guess I would have been hit profit target on my morning trade <laughs> had I held it. What do you know? Need a bounce. Coming back down inside the expected move. Stop's going to happen. Tranche three should hit 25s and 20s. Wait, what was that? Oh, Trunch 3 didn't fire because it's below half percent, but I'm going to, I'm going to manually fire my Trunch 3. Oh. 
I think I may have gotten stopped out of tranche two. Hang on a second. Tranche one got stopped. All right, so tranche three. I'm still trading as an update, even though it snuck a little bit below half percent. So tranche three, I'm on the 20s and 25s. 25 calls, 20 puts. I did book uh, $1,290 on an oil futures trade today. So price had flushed pre-market and started to bounce up. And so I got long looking for a continuation. And my exit was the yesterday's open. And that's, it got almost just a little bit past that. And so it was a really nice trade. Hold it, held it for from the time that I got in, pretty much the whole move. Fifty thirty is my sweet spot. Unfortunate I got stopped on tranche one. Didn't realize it was that close. Pretty close to getting out of 40% uh, of power hour number one. and just got out of 40 percent power hour number one yeah i think we needed to put monday monday needed to go in a timeout anyway marl the old skew i haven't looked at skew in a while Well, it's not really that low. It was a lot lower in October. It's basically mid-range. I have the high marked with this blue line and the low marked with the yellow line. It's it's in the upper upper half. I'm not sure what old zero hedge is talking about. Twenty five million to the buy side, early indication. <clears throat> Just two hundred tomorrow? I mean, let's go four hundred while we're asking.
Nice naughty dog. There we go. Yeah, great job. It's pretty good return for five days. I'd like things to set about 50, 28, 29 right in there in my sweet spot. All right, charts two and three are slightly green. Gonna push up to 50 30. Probably would get out of 20% of my power hour number two. This is what I'm looking for. Definitely would like an uneventful rest of the next 30 minutes. Anybody else do a 1 DTE today? I did an AM uh, on accident. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> I booked a small profit on it. Booked 10% and closed it. I mean, if this thing was centered, I guess it would be around 30%, but no chance in hitting our 45%, that's for sure. I'll leave it on just in case Mr. SPX decides to go up or down instead of up. For SPX needs to go up to fifty thirty, and then we can just hang out right there. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna do the one DT. I'm not gonna do the four DTE version tomorrow, with Monday being a holiday. My kids got a half day today. They're off tomorrow, and they're off Monday for President's Day. Yeah, mine are off tomorrow as well. What is this all about? President's Day know. is all of a sudden a four day weekend. Don't know. Yeah, markets are closed on Monday. Re-entries are hovering around 80%. Trying to squeeze 90 out of those. Homeboy, where do you live? Colorado? Utah? Let's 
<laughs> Ski Week in Sacramento? Interesting. Oh, yeah, that's true. I've been skiing in Tahoe twice. Um, what's the big one? Squaw Valley. I've been to Squaw Valley. It's a cool place. Yeah, Tahoe's awesome. Get the skiing in the winter and the lake in the summer. Got some casinos in case you want to throw down. Oh, it's not called Squaw Valley anymore? What is it? Is that is that too racist? Tahoe at Palisades. Okay. Oh, does it really? <laughs> well, yeah, that might rub some people the wrong way, I guess. Oh, that's why my tranche one got stopped out. I forgot I have trailing stops on my update. <clears throat> These ones are sitting at about 85%, getting close. Just took one, Benji. That was on oil. Got in at 8.40 a.m., so about 10 minutes after the market opened. Based on the price action I saw on the daily chart, scaled out of, I had two contracts, scaled out of one here, and then scaled out of the, scaled out of the last one pretty close to the top. 1290. All right, I'm good if we sit here for just a few more minutes to get out of this trade. It's at 87%. I need 90. Then we can bounce. Still at 25 million to the buy side. Yeah, definitely need a little bounce here. I've yet to get out of half of my power hour number two, so that's what I need a bounce for. It's 
So my NDX, which you can see is just dead centered. In Trade Steward, I have it set with a 95% profit target, which is, I think, 20 cents maybe. Yeah, 20 cents and it's still not filling. It's because of those wide, wide bid ask spreads. I got filled at 415 was my entry fill price. Yeah, longs have no value, but that's just on the trade steward automatically moves to just the strikes that have a bid, although maybe the shorts don't have a bid. Now that I think about it. That is the issue. My short calls don't even have a bid. I do have a 5025 straddle in my other account. That would be a pin. So I need it between about 5025 and 5030. Get up there. Hovering around the expected move. My re-entry sitting at 87%, just going to lean a teeny bit more decay to come out. You need a bit more decay and then we can bounce. Still 25 million to the buy side. Knocking on the door of my 90%. <clears throat> Vic's coming down. Almost to lows of day. But get up there, SPX. 
There goes one of them at 80 cents. There goes the other one at a buck 90. All right, cool. 90% out on those. Now we can bounce. Yeah, right. definitely need a bounce. Power hour bounce. I'm going to get stopped on power hour two. So here were my re-entries today. First one got stopped for a small profit. Second one got stopped for a small profit. And then the two that just closed out at 90%. So plus a little over 9,100 on those today. Those were nice. Well, my tranche three is up 38%, which I need to get close to reducing my stop on that one. Set it down to two bucks. All right, reduced my stop on tranche three. That's far enough, SPX. So here's my tranche three that I just reduced the stop on and then tranche two is slightly red. Yeah, that's what I found too, Marl. Just I couldn't get anything to really look good from a back testing perspective, but ah. been strong all day, and then it comes down during power hour. Better bounce right there, buddy. You can do it. Hold the line. Yep. So my tranche two is currently trading at fourteen twenty, stops at sixteen ninety five. Power hour number two stop is at eight ten. I'm currently at seven twenty two. Had a real nice green day going until this power hour number two. So let's get a bounce, big guy. Six hundred million to the buy side is the final MOC numbers. So no MOC trade. I uh, booked, uh, what was that, 60% and out? Yep, 60% and out on power hour number one. Nice. Needed that one. OpenAI.com Sora. 
creating video from text. Hmm. Booyah. To check that out. Discount. Oh, here's a little bounce coming. Yeah, I just put 20% on Power Hour 2. All right, tranche three is up 35% now. Tranche two jumped up to 26. Close to reduce my stop on tranche two. Reduce my stop on tranche two. All right, let's slow down. Just hang around 30, maybe a little bit I higher. I got booked on 40% of number two as well. Nice. So I'm going to take either tranche two or three off. So we get to five minutes till... I'll decide on the other one. My one DTE is almost even. Actually, it was in the green before we bounced. I'm going to get out of tranche three because it's the 2025s. Closing tranche three. Should book about 42% on that one. Filled at 350. And now we need to move up to 30. I'll be, I'm not going to let uh, this one expire either as a straddle. I just want to see if we can get closer to 30. Be a nice green day for me. That's awesome, homeboy. 
It'd be four and zero. Oh. He's two power. Wow. Really, really good. My one DTE just closed for small scratch loss. Uh, minus minus three fifty. Can we get one more little oomph? We'll push up towards hive day. I know SPX wants a new high. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's in its DNA lately. For sure. NDX will expire for max profit. Out 60%. 60% nice. out power hour two. Nice white tiger. You betcha. Lots of good profits today. But Otis, man. Power hour coming through today. A little over two minutes to go. Still waiting for a little more push. There you go. There you go. All right. Now I'm going to get out. Or this thing rips my face off in the next, last minute. All right, filled at 260 on that straddle. Nice. All right, so let's see. Let, wait for Trade Steward to update. All right, so 8.30 on my NDX. That'll expire. Tranche 3. Uh, almost 40%. Tranche 2, I booked 75%. Tranche 1 was my biggest, so it lost 5, 51, 50. My 1 DTE, minus 350. My mm -hmm. AM, which could have hit profit target had I just left it alone, ended up booking 1,000. And then on my re-entries... 3,400, 5,200, 240, 245. So good day, my friends. Tomorrow, last day of the week. Tomorrow is, what's the date? 16th. Yeah, so uh, we'll be streaming live at the open for zero DTE. And then we'll be back for power hour. All right, all. Take care. Have a good night. See you tomorrow.